Number two, when you um, uh, look at inflation, a lot of you have noticed the prices of everything going up. It's gotten kind of crazy. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, number three, the gap between the rich and the poor has really continued to stretch. Because if you notice in the pandemic, what you saw was feast or famine. You saw businesses that were doing better than they'd ever done. And then you saw businesses that were just dying. If you go to a lot of downtowns and you know people that own restaurants and stuff like that, or people who didn't have their books together where they could go in and get these, some of these PPP loans, uh, these businesses died. These businesses are gone. They're never coming back. And, uh, and so that was another shift in the economy. And then AI is going to further increase that gap, right? So so here's where I want to kind of get to. Um, the car note is kind of a symptom of a bigger issue. Do you understand? The, the, the whole idea of car notes being insanely high and the average American only being able to afford a $400 car note, that's just one of about 50 things happening that I could describe to you that would explain the shift in this economy. Uh, workers' wages did not go up even as inflation went up. So uh, so here's what I want to um, kind of uh, leave you with in terms of actionable steps and understanding. Number one, everybody has to invest, period. Uh, everyone should be investing in the stock market, period. Uh, most of this this period, most of this time uh, during the pandemic where all these gaps were occurring, all these issues were occurring, the stock market has been going up, up, up. It hasn't stopped. Real estate has been going up, up, up. So uh, over time, if you can be a property owner, everybody should be a property owner. Uh, the only thing stronger than inflation is uh, something they call asset inflation. Asset inflation is the rate of growth in the value of financial assets, including things like real estate, stocks, bonds, crypto, and all that stuff. So asset inflation has been insanely high. So all the rich guys have been getting richer during this whole period. They're, they're, they're not struggling at all. Uh, the other kinds of inflation that have been pretty strong are things like um, the cost of health care and the cost of uh, college tuition. All these in institutions are able to take advantage of these sort of distorted perspectives when it comes to how the economy is being run. And the distortion is unfortunate because what happens is they tend to overfeed some sections of the economy and then they starve out others. And so I don't want you to be in the section where you're being starved out. I want you to go to the section where the money's at. So this is one of the reasons why I say to you that if you're a person that wants to get the fancy car and have the big car note, uh, just put the same, make sure you put the same amount of money in the stock market on a consistent basis. Also, the other thing that I don't, the other mistake I don't want you to make is I don't want you to be short sighted. Uh, I have had people that have said to me, uh, they, I, when we did the stock option summit, there was a person who said, yeah, I bought, you know, five stocks last year and they've been doing really bad and they really, they really dropped and, and, and you know, and, and I'm thinking about switching and everything else. And I said, I'm not going to tell you what to buy and not to buy because I don't give investing advice. You guys know this, right? You do understand this is not investing advice, right? I have to explain that. Like, for example, when when someone, when there's a black owned business like the Tulsa Fund or something and it doesn't do well, I say, look, I support these businesses. When when I see them, I say, hey, so go take a look at it. It's a black owned business, but that's not my business. I don't know what these people are doing exactly, but I do know that they're black and I do think that you should give them a try if you are interested, but you have to do your due diligence. Okay, so I want to make that clear. I'd like to get a yes from you to know that this is not an investment advice platform. Okay, do we understand this? All right, but what I do say to them, as I said, you got to understand stock market investing is not a one week, two week, six month, one year process. It's not, it's not, you can't evaluate an investment based on what you see after nine months. You can't do that. That's not going to give you the information that you need. Uh, you Most investments, like, so for example, when I give you profit alerts or when we uh, do things in the Black Business School, like in the Black Stock Market Program, I have a list of what I call what Dr. Boyce is buying. Well, these are companies that you have to hold them at least five to 10 years to really know what they're actually going to do. And uh, and so so generally speaking, when you invest, you have to have investor vision. Uh, investor vision is a little bit different from what you see in society. In society, you have a lot of instant gratification. You have a lot of uh, people that sort of, they, they think that if I buy something today, I'm going to have money to, uh, you know, next week. No, you, you may have to watch the value drop a little bit. You have to, you know, but if you've done your due diligence and you believe in the company, then that's one of the companies you own. But then the other aspect of investing that people often forget is that you're supposed to be invested in multiple spaces. If you're if you're ever invested in a way where one investment, one bad investment can ruin you, that means you did not properly invest.
You should never be invested in such a way where one company going bad just ruins everything for you. If that's how you feel, if you say, gosh, you know, Tesla went down and I lost everything or, or I'm, I'm poor, I'm broke now because Tesla's struggling. That means you didn't invest properly. You shouldn't have 60% of your money in Tesla, you know? And, and, and so, and a lot of people will do that and they think, they think, oh, I'm invested. I'm invested. It's like, yeah, you're invested, but not in a healthy way. That's not healthy investing. Putting money out there into something, hoping that the value goes up is not the same as investing. That's what that that because you could go to the casino and say I put all my money on black at the at the uh, roulette wheel and I I you know and 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 I'm so I'm investing now no you're not investing you're you're gambling that's called gambling and so ultimately what I would say to you is uh, just invest safely but everybody has to invest it's not I mean again well how about this I was gonna say it's not optional now but I guess it always is the problem is that the consequences of not participating in the economy in that way are bigger than they've ever been. So I would argue this, uh, given that in the Black Business School, our Black core of three is really simple. We believe Black people should educate our own children, create our own jobs, and support Black-owned businesses. Uh, given that you're educating your own children, even when they come home from school, uh, I'm, I'm not saying don't send them to school. I'm saying educate our own children. So when you're educating your own children, I think investing should probably be the first thing that you teach them. Because, but then really remember what you're doing is you're teaching them to manage assets that you're going to help them build. You know, and, and we have a model, it's the KID model.